Hello fellow armchair generals, this is Gamer1745 with the start of a new series. Um, it is Field of Glory 2. The game is Field of Glory 2 uh, with the DLC Rise of Persia. The game is relatively new. The DLC is brand new, I think out just last week. So I don't think it's been seven days um, that it's been out. Um, at the time of release uh, so that I want to say graciously um, Slytherin Games gave me a copy to review copy to feature for you to see if it's the type of game you would like I've already been playing um, mostly a, this is going to be a campaign this game has standalone battles campaigns um, you can do um, you know multiplayer matchups um, uh, other sorts of things like that um, so it's a wide feature. I've been playing a different campaign so as not to spoil this one to learn the mechanics of it because I wanted to sort of do it with some base level, not an expert, but base level uh, playability for this series. So it's taking me a little while to get this done with everything going on. So um, up front first, um, if you haven't already, love for you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, for many more great historical games um, so that and I will say as a review of this I love this game I don't know if this game is for you but you should watch this to find out <coughs> excuse me because this game does um, what it's supposed to in my opinion extremely well and as we will see what it, it does is an excellent job at sort of the classic and sort of this is pre-classic at least my opinion is this pre-classic world um, uh, the sort of classic era um, miniature war games as in tabletop miniature war games but do it on the computer and do it right do it well um, do it extremely well and unlike a paradox title it has very good combat ai so yes that is something indeed okay so we're going to start this off um it's 550 bc now to give a little bit of context here in 330 bc the lower the number the more new new it is for a bc just for you americans out there who don't know didn't go through, didn't get educated in, in a proper school, just in an American school. Um, 1 BC is the most recent. So I don't know if you have 0 BC, because that would be year 1 AD, Anno Domini. This is before Christ. Um, this is 550 BC. 330 BC, or 332, or right, at, right about there, is the year that Alexander the Great crosses the Hellespont from with his army from Europe to Asia so starting his big Persian campaign so that's a few hundred years after this time period so okay um, in uh, 609 the Assyrian Empire fell to an alliance of Medeans or, I don't know Medes Medeans I don't know Medes and Babylonians, I know how to pronounce that one, at least in the standard English style. The known civilized world is now divided between four mighty kingdoms, the Medea, that's how I pronounce that word, in the north, Babylon in the south, Lydia in the northwest, and Egypt in the southwest. Now, King Cyrus II, the Achmedian, or Achmedid, um, Persian king of a small Persian gulf, subject kingdom of and Shan, and the grandson of the Median king of kings, Astigenes, Astigenes, sorry, I'm butchering some of this, through his daughter Mandane, was, or has rebelled against his grandfather. The battle is about to be joined. Okay, so that's sort of setting the history of this time period. So we're at the Persian Gulf area, we all know where that is, sort of Kuwait, Qatar, you know, southern coast of Persia. 
We're playing the Rise of Persia campaign, so it's probably more along that part of the coast. I'm just guessing here. Okay, so in this battle of um, right around this time, our objective is to route the enemy army by routing at least 40% of their troops and no and 25% more than you have lost, or routing 60% of their troops. So if you just, no matter what your your losses are, if, if we totally take out or routing 60% of their troops, we have 24 turns to do it in. The enemy are offering open battle. Okay, so we're going to close this now. Okay, these are our sort of starting base forces plus what we want to pick and buy from our possible army mixture. Okay, so we can sort of see the battlefield here. Um, we're sort of almost a ziggurat here, not quite up on top. Now we have to sort of route them before they route us I so we've got to draw them into battle and not just stand back so we have to keep that in mind I'm going to max out on archers we're just sort of buying these troops at the moment um, let's go with Mm. Now these guys and these guys, they're um, uh, skirmishers, so they'll get. We can deploy these further out. You can see on this grid square map, we can deploy those two squares forward of our mainline troops, which is an important thing. Okay, now. Um, mm, Irregular foot. We have armored cavalry with a bow, armored and armored. Okay, so we got a couple of light horsemen with bows. Archers are fairly cheap. These are even cheaper. Let's go with a couple of Persian Immortals. The reason is they were immortal is as soon as any of them died, they simply got replaced immediately. Um, many ancient world units. Um, this I found really sort of odd. Um, don't get replacements. This is my understanding with some of the Roman army, some of the Roman legions. Um, they would be raised as an legion, and for at least their um, term of service, I think normally 20 years or something. Um, again, I may have some of these details wrong, and things may have changed. And because if you look at very early Roman legions, they're all citizen volunteer type units. It's um, sort of Marius's reforms where you bring in sort of professional soldiers at some time later um, they would raise a legion and the legion over time would be slowly uh, whittled down and I from what I read and it may be wrong and it sort of baffles me they didn't recruit replacements but like I say I could be wrong and maybe someone watching will know better okay we're gonna get some of you know, these guys Okay, we have a total of 1,276 points to play with, and we have, um, uh, is that number getting higher or lower? I think it's getting lower as we, um, yeah, it's getting lower as I thought, as we um, get more. But we've got a, quite a few units here. Um... Let's do another one of those. These are going to be really cheap, so let's grab those. 
I want some more skirmishers and Wow, just one point from another one of these. Okay, um, no regular light foot. Light horse archers, okay. So, that is picking up army. We're only not using 12 points. So let's, one area I haven't done really well yet, or figure doing, is um, how to do command, um, setting up command um, arrangements. Mm. Yeah, we're going to deploy there. And let's place that sort of there in the center as reserve. And those guys there. Oh, we still have one more unit. Okay. Um, okay, we can see. Well, I like the top of this mountain, so we'll place you here. We'll move you here. Okay, so now we, um, these are skirmishers and they can fall back through a tight formation without um, disrupting themselves or the other formation. That is a very critical thing. But they can't fall back through two of them. So if I were to place skirmishers here and they've got to meet, like, run away from the enemy if the enemy like charges them with with horse or something they can run they have a chance of running away but if you place them right in front of here or like right in front of this one they will get stuck out in front of your troops and have to fight and die here so just keep that in mind for placement and where you might want to be placing these guys that is an important element here with them um, yeah so you can sort of notice that we're skipping partially we're one I don't have enough to put um, archers along the full front up there is part of the reason of why I'm doing what I'm doing now we're going to place You and you there. No. No, we're going to take these guys. You can go over there. They can go up front a little more forward because they're considered horse skirmishers. Instead of sort of frontline units. I'm not saying this is the best formation, I'm just putting them in a formation that I think is reasonably good. Sort of based on the terrain layout, um, they're going to start here, they'll probably be able, if they want to move, they can move to the, to the ridge here before I can get there, I think. Um, so I don't know if I want to move to the edge of this hill and hold, we'll see how this goes. So we're going to accept, this is our starting. Now, okay, so we're going to end the deployment mode. That's um, turn one. We don't get a chance to move. We could, um, you know, change the deployment. Okay, so I'm I'm selecting them with a left click, and then if I want to move them, I'm right clicking, and then I would left click to. Um, this would change the deployment. This would change it, make them face backwards. This would do it to the whole command, all these highlighted units that you currently see. But we're not going to choose any of those. So we're going to end this turn. 
Now we have to confirm it. And so now the enemy's turn is to deploy. Okay, so now turn two is the start of the battle. So they have, they're shifting much more over here. Interesting, okay. Um, yep, yeah, we'll move the whole um, formation forward like that. Um, well, no, because these guys, I think, can move further, yeah. So these guys will just move. I'll put our skirmishers out there to um, skirmish. And go in the woods. Yeah, definitely to the edge of the hill. That will give us bonus there now here so we have to be ready for them to charge us I don't know um yeah let's I'm gonna move the click here and we're gonna move this whole line um well they're definitely not getting up this hill this hill be or mm, we can move forward I guess I guess I should say to here still be in a fairly good position. Um, we may be moving further forward. Um, hmm. You can see with this standard he is a general. He is generally also sort of see the Roman style helmets are on the corners. To if you have a, if a general is lost in combat uh, he d it does bad things. And also, you they sort of need to have a they do well, they do have a command radius. These are way outside of our current arrow range. So King, um, oh, let's see. Um, this is King Cyrus's commander chief. So especially if he goes down, really bad things happen. So we really don't want him to, to die. Um, we will hopefully see some, um, one of preferably theirs, um, go and you can see the thing. I get rid of this confirm button because nothing else is neat up there. Okay, so they're just saying, okay, we're here. We like it. We like the spot. We're going to stay right where we are. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we'll move these up. Okay, but we're going to fire these guys sort of individually. I don't want to concentrate my fire where I can. As you can see down on the strength um, of where this pops up lower left, you can see we've eh, pushed their strength down a little bit. Yeah, they may move forward, but I'm guessing not too rashly at the moment. Okay. They're still out of their range. Oh, they can't get up that bit of a steep bit there. Um, hmm. Rough ground, I guess. It's just mostly rough ground that they're having a problem with. Let's undo this. We can't forever undo it, but we can undo it a little bit. Oh, it's all that 
they had to go around to. Okay, that's not impassable as we can see here, but definitely not conducive to speedy attacks or probably charges. These guys have a range of two squares that they can shoot, so they can't or throw their javelins. They don't have as much range as the archers do. Yes, end the turn. As you can see, like that, they can evade charges. Depending on the types and speeds of horse. This is why I think this is a really well done game. And okay, so these guys are going to turn. Well, the way you're facing is very important. So turn and shoot. These guys are just going to shoot. Probably should have gone up the hill, but oh well. Can't move the whole formation forward? I guess not. Oh, because there's some terrain difficulty, maybe. Okay, well. And if it's one at a time, it's one at a time. they can come up there these guys are also going to shoot 42 now we're going to do bad things to that unit Just gonna throw some. Now they're disrupted. And they are even more disrupted. Distance does affect um, accuracy. Now we're not going to move any closer because we'll get pummeled ourselves. And they're going to come up and throw. Oh, 
Okay. End the turn. So, we could move closer, it would put us on a little better footing. We're now going to concentrate right on that command unit there. Throw javelins. These guys are going to shoot arrows. This is also a general, so we're trying to be nasty. We're actually going to turn and face them and shoot. Held firm, but losing strength. Uh, that'll break my lineup. So, um,. Sticks at them. I guess these guys also should should have. Well, yeah. We are higher, so we can shoot over the heads of our troops here, which is a good thing. Because now we've disrupted this general. I don't know exactly how the chances go, um, sub-general. But I'm certainly going to concentrate on him. guys so you got a shot through to there shot through to there let's they've already shot they've already shot these guys um I think since we're sort of weak over here let's see if we can disrupt Now, 
I've talked in a lot of different um, uh, episodes of different games, um, often in the um, uh, early types of games like like this, uh, or a Aggressors Ancient Rome, or um, playing Total War, about the Eastern and Western ways of war. And this is, oh boy, I forget the author. Um, uh, very famous author, why am I forgetting him? Um, uh, I'm trying to look at my bookshelf to see if I can spot. Um, the book, no, I can't easily from here. Okay, um, I should get that. And he talks very much about the Eastern and Western waves of war. The East, this tip, this shows what the Eastern ways of warfare are. Mostly, it's this. We come up, we've got our big shields. All these guys are, are um, uh, they're, they're, but they also have light spear and sword, as well as both. And they carry with them these big but thin shields. These are, these are flimsy shields. Enough to sort of stop an arrow kind of thing. And so, is sort of typical in that they move up, they disrupt the enemy, they get the enemy sort of, you know, not very well functioning before they ever go in to attack. And generally speaking, they're lighter troops on both sides. Where the Western way of war is to go in in mass and have shock and impact on the enemy. And you can see this in, say, the Greek uh, hoplite or the later Greek or Macedonian, whatever you want to call it, phalanx, in which you've got troops that have no ability to throw anything. Their um, uh, spears or their um, pikes, as they get longer, however you want to designate them, um, there's no way to throw them. And then they have swords or daggers or something like that, and there's no real effective way to throw them at the, at the enemy. So they have heavy shields, a actual helmet where, I mean, these are great. Um, we can't zoom in beyond this. But these are fairly lightweight helmets, even the sort of um, armored guys have here. But the Greeks have sort of, and especially as time goes on, it gets sort of heavier and more coverage, full head cover. Um, greaves, as I, you know, on their shins. So their shield covers from sort of their neck down to their shins. Their shins have very strong glees on them. They normally have some body armor. Can be pretty heavy, but can also be fairly light depending on what type. Um, so that's, and then with your head protected. So you're, you're sort of protected against a lot of these arrows, javelins, and slingshot um, shot coming at you. And so you move in this protected wall and crash into the enemy. That is um, the Western way of war. Now, both both of the Eastern and Western can use some degree, once you sort of got the, um, the phalanx or even the sort of um, Greek hopolites um, locked into their formation, they're sort of locked in, and all they can do is either try to move either straight ahead or slightly, what is it, um, to the left or to the right, I forget. Um, I think it's to the right because you move, can move slightly because you're trying to um, use the protection of the shield to your right because that shield is round. It's not a, a Roman style sort of um, oval or sort of rectangular vertical shield. It's a round shield. So about a third or more of the shield is covering the guy next to you as it is covering you. So I would say about two thirds is you it's helping the other third is the guy next to you and so it, the the formation has a tendency to drift because guys are looking for cover um and so you, you're sort of now once you're sort of locked into that but before you're locked into that formation you very well may like try to move to the flanks or ambush them and we can see this in in their warfare when they can but often they might come up onto a field like this and on one side have a river the other side have mountains or something and so no one's going to flank anybody and they'll just go head on head on to head on 
you move much further west to the Gauls, you still have this shock power. They aren't a interlocked um, phalanx or whatever, or they're not the sort of the Roman forma the tight Roman formation. They're a much sort of looser formation, but they have that charge, shock of impact, deep formations when they're charging, coming at you, just sort of a wave at you, and they're using that shock of impact. You don't find that typically. I'm not saying never. These We're talking typical things here. In the Eastern Warfare, the Eastern Warfare will often use cavalry coming around the sides and flanks. We'll use a lots of missile throwers to weaken, and it'll often be that one side will not attack the other until it perceives the enemy is disrupted enough to do so. Once it's disrupted, then it will certainly see about doing so. Got to remember to these guys. They've done their thing. These guys also did their thing. Okay, good. So, just trying to demonstrate the different eastern ways of war. And this is very, very... See, they're retreating out. They're retreating. They've charged. They've evaded. They're evading. They've charged. They're evading. So basically, they didn't take any damage. They shot at somebody from what they did some damage. They did damage to these guys. So although this is a turn-based game compared to, say, the Total War series, in some ways this is more sophisticated, in some ways maybe not as sophisticated. But it is a very good job at being, um, at doing miniature warfare. For me, games like this have taken over my, I would still love to, I'm, the expense of painting up one of these armies just to play some of these battles. Buying the armies, painting, taking the time to paint up the armies. Because, you know, God off you try to pay somebody to um, uh, paint all this up would, would cost an immense amount of money. But um, doing all this would be quite expensive just to do this if you're going to just play a casual campaign. This is cheaper. And the ability to play this at any time, day or night, is... Um, what for me is taken over any real desire to play miniature war games anymore. I have painted up, not ancient, I've painted um, 18th century up um, miniature armies like this type of stuff, played micro armor with, you know, for tanks in World War II. And yeah, I would still love to stand around a table and talk shop as, as sort of I'm doing with you, but chat with the guys around the table while playing the miniature war games. That would be cool. And the, you can play this as a multiplayer. I have not even looked into how, an easy, how easy it is to find opponents. I don't know if they have a server or whatnot. But, um, and of course as I'm saying that, yeah, you can do um, m you know, miniature war you, you can play with other people what is sort of good about this is I could play with my buddy in England. It's like one of the guys is, you know, sort of talking about not this game, but another game and whatever and going, yeah, well, hey, if you're ever around, because he knows I'm in, you know, in America, I'd love to have you come over and we could, you know, still play. Um, you know, so, and I go, yeah, if I'm ever in Britain and I've got the time, I'd love to stop by and, you know, play some miniature war games with him. And that would be great. Um, but with a game like this, because I know he's currently painting up a Crusades army. Um, we could play some battles with each other across the internet. Um, and that kind of thing. So I love that idea. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move this formation, even though he is a general, to here. Fortunately, he's angled wrong, but that's all right. Because so far we're controlling this side of the field just fine. Oh, well, we can shoot here. So we will... But I want to get him shooting there eventually, but not this turn. Hold firm, but there, as you can see here... From 690 down to 350, so they are 
just about halfway gone. Okay, so taking that in mind, what we're going to do is these three units are all going to shoot at this unit here. So now they're disrupted. Shoot, they've got... Damn, see, now they're locked in. Damn, 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 damn. Okay, um... These guys are going to... Uh, no, undo. Undo. These guys are going to retreat back to here. I want to have this space open. These guys are going to move to here. And turn and face that way. They don't still have the action points to be able to attack. But now at least if they're charged, they can um, retreat through this formation. Okay, so... They don't have the range. Fine. These guys are going to concentrate there. They're slowly being whittled down. Okay, these guys can shoot to there. Good. They can't shoot through these guys, but they can angle off to here or down here. Well, they're running away, so they're not much of a threat. So let's shoot there. Concentrating our power, and these guys have shot. So these, I know they could go there, but let's continue our focus there. And now they're disrupted. And these guys are going to shoot here. Well, they took some damage. We did shoot all of these. Okay, um... Let's move these guys to the flank, because now we're sort of winning over here. They can come around the flank. These guys next turn will do some of that. Um, no, we're winning enough here. Let's, let's come around here. We may need them on the flank over here. They're evading like they're supposed to. What I want. They charged uphill. They fragmented attacking us. They charged too disruptedly or whatever. These guys also fragmented charging us. So this is again like I talked about. The Eastern way of war. And they've done a really great job. They've evaded, okay, so now we're front line to front line. The lower numbers are better, because the lower the numbers are casualties of your over the ones that are appearing over your troops. Okay, they've come around my flanks and are disrupting my flanks. Chased off the skirmishers. Good thing I'm shifting some troops over this side. We might be 
be in trouble here. Okay. Now. All of this is sort of why I didn't um, push my forces further forward. Okay, they're going to retreat. So they go backwards while facing forward still. And I take these guys to be a little more dangerous. So we're going to shoot them. Still too far away, but I'm not going to advance there. that way and it allows us to shoot. Okay, they're just sort of... Yeah, they're in really good shape still. Now, if we were to charge, you can see impact and melee and the likelihoods. Um, those are not bad odds. Um, I'm just going to move here. No, I'm not. I'm going to undo this. Um, I'm going to keep... I, I'll do that. I will face that way, so I'm now on the angle. And I'm going to shoot here. To disrupt that. Okay, now let's... Okay, you can see our wind chances are pretty damn bad, so we're just gonna shoot arrows with these guys. We're gonna throw some sharp pointy sticks at them. Now they're disrupted. Now if we were to attack, we have a very good chance of winning. They are evading and we're following, which may not be a good thing, actually. Now, here, um... Yeah, we're gonna face this way. We can't shoot at these guys because they are in close combat with these guys. But we can shoot up here. To disrupt them. Of course, we could have attacked, but we didn't. Um, I think because these guys are fragmented, well, okay, if we do this, not a good chance of winning. Attack here, good, very good chance of winning, so we're going to push in there. there. They break, they route. These guys held firm, but they needed a morale check. Watching their buddies run away, and... Did we get it better? Well, I don't know if it's better, but it's not worth it. Um, yeah, we want to shoot at the, the sub general here. Fragmented. Now these guys can shoot. Okay, so they've shot. They haven't. Um, we could see about combat. We'd actually do fairly well there. And they're disrupted. So, um, yeah. It may have not been the best choice, but it was a choice. So shoot out there. And uh, I don't think we'll charge. Eh, mm, not terrible, but not something I want to do. Okay. Okay. 
we were to pass forward, we could... gives us some options. These guys are likely going to run away. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go after the general, even though he's far away. Oh, 15. Oh, well, that helps. Yes, yeah, And we will turn and face that way. Get ready to move in that direction. All right. We're going to end this. Well... Okay, yeah, this looks like a good... Because they're fragmented, they may fall apart on us. On... Nope, didn't. These guys... Yeah, this isn't a good option. So, no. Yeah, they've already... Nah. If they want to push into us, they can. We've already pushed into them. Okay. Okay, let's end the turn. I wouldn't mind a what units haven't moved yet option here. Ooh, we're disrupted and falling back. That is not a good sign. so they've all fallen apart a bit. Okay, so. attack, we would be doing probably pretty good. Um, I think, though, we're going to just launch arrows into them. Okay, these guys have fired. These guys haven't. Um, I'm more worried about them than I am about these irregular foot. So let's fire into there and fire in there. Concentrate our fire. They've held firm, but they've taken a bunch of casualties. Now here, if we were to charge, we wouldn't do too well. If we were to go after that, do a little better. Um, yeah, that looks like a likely positive outcome. Well, about equal draw, as it said, that was quite possible. Okay, um... No, we're 
just gonna okay, they're now blocking but we're going or they're blocking their shot but we're gonna use them Again, concentrating our firepower on We're doing what damage we can. And these guys can also join in on the fun. Throwing sharp pointy sticks at them. We're gonna retreat by one. These guys are going to come here. Should have retreated them too. Face that way. And 12. Not hard hits, but still hits. harder. Okay, they are breaking and running away. Some of these units may very well rally. No, still not good enough. Uh, hopefully they'll get better organized. Okay, well, we're going to see what happens next episode. Good reason to show up to see, will these guys be able to break my line some more? Will they be able to turn my flank with all these troops? I'm sort of relying upon this broken ground to help us here with dealing with their horse. But they have brought up a bunch of reserves there. And they were bringing these reserves up. These guys, I'm thinking if I keep chasing them, they're going to just keep running away. So I don't know what to do with Well, let's shoot at them. Uh, yeah, let's see if we can, oh, they're evading, that's sort of the problem with these guys, they just keep evading, and they draw my good units away. We're going to let these guys run away, I don't want to waste the ammo on them, there's a limited amount. So, we'll see what happens next episode. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you would, like the video, it helps both me by giving more visibility to these videos and helps you by telling YouTube what you want to see and post your comments tell me what you think about this be honest if you hate it say you hate it but please tell me why um, you know and if you love it I'd also like to know why maybe it's the same reasons I have maybe it's different maybe you just like colorful clothing of the people on the field you know getting tired of camouflage and field gray but whatever it is love to hear see you next time for more historical gaming.